Praise the Lord, glory to God. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, for today's message, we will read uh, before going to the message and just uh, an introduction. Uh, we are going to meditate on a subject which most of the people may not want it, may not like it, may not understand it, but we are supposed to uh, know who our God really is. Some people ascribe our God as only Lord God. Some people always ascribe Him as judgment. Some people, they say He is so merciful that He will not cast anyone into hell. So, every part, bit, bit by bit, they try to understand God, but not wholesome. Knowledge of God is not there, it's missing in Christendom today. So according to the Kanvi in Suli, they try to understand God and seek God. But it will not be valid in the presence of God. We should know them according to Him and according to His word. So today we are going to speak on the wrath of God, especially towards the children of God but who are not meant for it. That also we are going to see. Always the truth will be bitter. Bitter truth, people not able to digest or take it at least, take it rather. What happens if you only keep taking sweets? It's harmful to your body. And even if you are going to take only bitterness, it will affect your kidneys. So, only salt, it will raise up your blood pressure. So, like that, all put together uh, according to the standard only gives a good health. Sweet also we need for energy, salt also we need, bitterness we need, everything to a certain extent. So, all we put together is God for our spiritual life also, for a spiritual man also. So today we will, let's turn to Psalm 2 and verse 12, Book of Psalms, chapter 2 and verse 12. The son, lest he be angry and you perish in the way, when his wrath is kindled but a while, Blessed are all those who put their trust in Him. Praise the Lord. Kiss the Son, lest He be angry and you perish in the way. We are in the spiritual journey and we are in the wilderness and we are heading towards the heavenly canon as the Israelites left Egypt and they were in this journey in the wilderness and towards earthly canon. So also we are leaving the spiritual uh, Egypt, the world, and heading towards spiritual canon. And the path that we are going through is the path of wilderness. And even as in the journey of people of Israel, many perished on the way. So also in the Christian walk, many perished on the way, not knowing how to deal with God's God, how to be obedient to God, how to be acceptable to God. People of Israel we know from Psalms and even in, uh, even in Moses' five books, in from Exodus to Deuteronomy, we read how they rebelled against God, murmured against God, grumbled against God on the way and they perished, they couldn't reach the earthly canon. So also many missed the mark. So because they brought God to anger, so also in these days people, uh, they think they are on a spiritual journey, but many of the activities not knowingly, uh, that uh, not knowing that their 
God is not pleased and he provokes him to anger because it's not according to him but according to his word. We are to be formed according to God. So, hallelujah, glory to God. That's why God gave his only begotten Son. Also, I hope believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He is God so loved the world. He is a God of love. He saved us by his grace. He is a God of grace. He is also a consuming fire. If you are going to continue to live according to the standard of this world and not to the standard of the kingdom of God. The wrath of God means how we can protect ourselves from the wrath of God that is going to come upon the whole world. So, of course, the world is kept for God's wrath, God in his long suffering. Hallelujah, glory to God. He does not bring judgment upon the world, but he is giving them a long rope. According to Second Peter chapter three and nine, for Second Peter chapter three and verse nine, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but all, but that all should come to repentance. Again, repentance will make you to escape from the destructive world. So it is why is in what context this verse is written over there if you see the last days verse 3 scoffers will come in the last days walking according to their own lusts saying where is the promise of his coming everything is same continue all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation for this they willfully forget that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of water in the waters by which the world then had existed perished being flooded with water. But the heavens and the earth which are now preserved by the same word are reserved for fire. The word is now preserved by the same word, the earth is preserved by the same word and reserved for fire unto the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. So, only the Lord is not slack concerning his promise about his coming. Some think there is, if there is blackness, but God is long suffering towards us, the children of God not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So, hallelujah, glory to God. So, only we read in Psalm 2, like uh, Psalm 2 and verse 12. What do we read there? Kiss the Son, and he, lest he be angry, and you perish in the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all those who put their trust in him. Kiss him lest he be angry and you perish. Kiss him means to put off his anger. Kiss him means only when we love someone, love the Lord our God, the children or anyone. So, hallelujah, an angry dad, his anger will vanish when the child kisses the father, the mother the same way. So also, when we do things that will, hallelujah, bring down the anger of God, hallelujah, we can escape. Kiss the son means do the act according to the expectation, to act according to the expectation of God, to live according to the expectation of God. So to cool off his anger, we have to do that 
which are blazing in his sight and go down as anger. The previous verse itself says that was still now therefore be wise, O kings, instruction to the kings, be instructed, you judges of the earth, serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Even the rejoicing should be the trembling, always holding the fear of God in us. Also, serve, we should serve him or to seek him or to whatever we do in the name of God, it should be with fear of God. So the fear of God is a quality, only quality that will make us, hallelujah, acceptable before God and make us do things that are acceptable before God. Hallelujah. So, we, as we read in Second Peter 3rd chapter, how like God is not slack concerning the promise. He destroyed it. He brought in the floods and saved but eight people of Noah's family and uh, Noah and his household were saved. The whole world because of the wrath of God. Hallelujah. Drowned in floods. Then God made a covenant saying that no more will I destroy them with waters. God doesn't want anybody to perish, but He wants everybody to repent and come to the senses and come to know. Hallelujah. True God of creation. And hallelujah. How how the human race, how do we sold themselves off to the devil, disobeying God's one and only commandment. And hallelujah, by from by which they lost the life of God which was given to them in the Garden of Eden. They became aliens to God. And they were appointed for destruction only because they served not God, but the liar, the devil, the enemy of God, by which they became enemies of God and earned the wrath of God. So to put off the wrath of God only, Jesus Christ took upon God sent his only begotten Son, to whomsoever believes in him, or to perish for the whole mankind, and took upon him all the wrath of God on the cross. So whoever comes to Jesus, he can escape from the wrath of God. Comes to Jesus, we seek him, and hallelujah, believe in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and follow his footsteps and his teachings. That's what is hallelujah coming, coming to Jesus Christ. Not just merry making and celebrating Christmas, New Year, and Easter is not hallelujah coming to Jesus, but really getting rid of the sins through the precious blood of Jesus by confessing and believing in him. Hallelujah, glory to God, true repentance and willing to turn completely towards God and his kingdom completely away from the world, in the spiritual walk. Verse 10, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it be burned up. So therefore, so if the works of the world is in us, then we are also appointed for the destruction so only we have to have the fear of God. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, and what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and new earth in in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, to be diligent, to be found by him in peace, without spot and blameless, and consider that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, as also our beloved brother Paul has written, and sent forth his son to quench off the wrath, poured out all his wrath upon him on the cross. Jesus bore everything for the mankind to deliver him from the clutches of the devil who makes them into uh, children of wrath by making them to do things against God. And Jesus interferes and delivers people all from the schemes of the enemy and makes them to hallelujah become beloved children of God by following his footsteps because Jesus himself is a beloved son of God. 
So hallelujah, glory to God. And finally also in the Revelations we read about uh, the destruction that's coming to, upon the whole world, the wrath of God going to consume the whole world as we read in 2 Peter 3rd chapter. Revelation also speaks about it. Revelation chapter 6 and uh, verse 16. Revelation 6 and 15. And the kings of the earth and the great men, the rich men, the commanders, the mighty men, every slave and every free man hid themselves in the caves and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come and who is able to stand? Even the kings and the rich men, free men, slave, mighty men, commanders, great men, all these people will call upon the hills and rocks to hide them from the wrath of who? The Lamb of God, whom they uh, project as only loving and only compassionate. Hallelujah. He is only going to come as a judge. Hallelujah. With a holy anger to consume and to fight the world with the sword of his mouth. And that we read in other chapters. Revelation 19, 20, 21 speaks about all this uh, judgment uh, coming upon the world because of the anger of God. And also in Revelation we read about the seven vials of uh, being poured by the seven angels filled with the wrath of the Almighty God upon the earth. Hallelujah to Hallelujah, glory to God. That's coming to terrible, terrible times are ahead uh, for the world. But Hallelujah, through the by the grace of God, through the mercies of God, by the death and resurrection, shedding of blood by Jesus Christ, Hallelujah, all believers in Him, they can escape from the wrath of God. But still, being Hallelujah saved uh, people, they still continue to choose the path which leads to the wrath of God. So the whole world is kept for the wrath of God. But those who come to the Lord to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and follow His footsteps, they will escape from the wrath of God. So only in Romans 5, 9 says that much more than having now been justified by His blood we shall be saved from the wrath through him. How much, much more than having now been justified by his blood. So when you believe Jesus Christ, hallelujah, your sins are forgiven, washed by the blood of Jesus, and we are saved from what? From the wrath of the enemy, from the hold of the enemy, the devil. That is being saved means being delivered from the slavery of the enemy and being brought into the kingdom, becoming the children of God through the blood of Jesus. So much more then, so when God has delivered you from the devil's hold and give you, given you the uh, sonship uh, to, by believing Jesus according to John 1.12, how much more, much more then, hallelujah, glory to God, we shall be saved from the wrath through Jesus Christ. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He has appointed us to obtain salvation. So okay, salvation once saved is not always saved. It's a process. He who endures till the end shall be saved. And those who are saved, they have to work out their salvation with fear and trembling and complete it. Oh, there are three steps of salvation also. Uh, salvation uh, by believing in Christ and you know, by grace we are saved. And then process of salvation. The final salvation is when the Lord appears. The redemption of the body. So, hallelujah, glory to God. Here, uh, if we read, for God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, 
we should live together with him. The one week purpose Jesus came and laid down his life is to live together with him. That's all, that was the purpose God created Adam and Eve, the first man, to live with him. So the same thing is accomplished through Jesus Christ and his death and resurrection. So this death and resurrection of Jesus Christ and uh, repentance, forgiveness of sins, kingdom of God, for eternal life should keep all people, should, it should be emphasized again and again in Christian in churches. That's the purpose, that's the real service that God would prefer to escape from the wrath of God. Uh, in the John the Baptist time, many Pharisees came to him to be baptized of him. For what was the reason that they came to be baptized of John the Baptist? He himself testifies there in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 3, and verse 8 and 9. Matthew's Gospel 3 and verse 7 and 8. Then he says, he rebukes them, saying that, But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, Brood of vipers, who want you to flee from the wrath to come? So why did they come to take the baptism? Oh, they thought if they take away the baptism, what is the baptism? They thought they would, hallelujah, they can escape from the wrath of God that was going to come. So he rebukes them saying that brood of vipers, they are still vipers and group of vipers or serpents, snakes, according to outwardly, Snakes, brood of vipers, means outwardly they are humans. The spirit operating inwardly was the spirit of serpent or the poison of the serpent who poisoned mankind in the Garden of Eden, still persisting in them because of impenitent or not repenting. So he says, bear fruit after repentance. So, hallelujah, do it. Even today, many people take baptism for different reasons. But hallelujah, which won't be valid unless and until they are baptized with true repentance, turning away from the world and turning towards God and His kingdom. And hallelujah, having a real thirst and hunger to hallelujah, attain the eternal life promised by Jesus Christ through His death and resurrection. So quickly we'll go into the uh, matters that what are the things that would uh, cause God to anger that we should refrain from. The Christian world is doing uh, uh, to provoke God to anger. Ephesians 2 3. Ephesians 2, we'll read from one also. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of the world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. Among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others, others who do not know God, who get along with the world and immersed in the world, and the prince of the world, or God of the Satan, devil, Satan in different forms. Not receiving God as the Saviour. So they are called the children of wrath. We were once conducting ourselves and we were dead in sins and trespasses before knowing Christ. <clears throat> and we were walking according to the world and according to the prince of the power of the air, spirits that are operating in the air, which now works in the sons of disobedience. Always that spirit causes people and fills people with spirit of disobedience to go against God. Among whom also we conducted ourselves. What the spirit of disobedience do? They conducted us themselves. We also once conducted ourselves in the lust of the flesh. The flesh man only lives and did whatever the flesh wanted to do. But not if the flesh prevails, the spirit man cannot live. Only the spirit man wants to do according to God. So, hallelujah, all the rest of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh, whatever the flesh wants, people want to uh, fulfill that desires. And of the mind, whatever the mind tells, 
that the spirit of disobedience uses the flesh and the mind and fills it with the desires. That's what as I told you earlier, Second Timothy 2.26, those who have been taken captive by the devil to do according to his will, hallelujah, they have to be well, hallelujah, taught in patience that they should come back to repentance. They have been taken captive and they have to come back to senses. They lost their senses to the devil. So, the one day when they repent, they will get back the senses, they will be able to sense God, understand God. Oh, otherwise, you will know, make the people numb in the spirit and mind, void of God. So, hallelujah. By nature, these kind of people, people who walk according to the world, according to the spirit of the air, which always causes people to dis uh, with disobedience, causes people to disobey and to make them to conduct themselves according to the world and according to the flesh and flesh is of the devil. Only the spirit man is off because the spirit man was put off and the flesh man Oh, we started obeying the devil and from the garden of Eden. And the mind. Mind also, the enemy blinded it so that they do not know the true living God. Second Corinthians 4.4 4. Oh, how the understanding was blinded only through gospel, through Jesus Christ when it is preached. Man comes to the understanding of our God and his redemptive world through Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah, glory to God, fulfilling the desire of the flesh and the mind, and by nature, children of wrath. So we were like that, it says, but sad to say, it's all to say that even after coming to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, because Paul says, God was rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together. By grace you have been saved. So when we believe in Christ Jesus, the power of Satan, the group of enemy, oh hallelujah, loses its hold. And we bring, we are brought under the power of God. And hallelujah, if we continue in this ways, we will be preserved. Oh hallelujah. So such great privilege, uh, people of God, People who believe in Jesus, they have. But sad to say, they continue in their old, same old ways and continue to walk according to the world, not according to God. And obey the prince of the power of the air, that is the spirit which works in sons of disobedience. The spirit causes people to. When fill people with disobedience, they won't they are not won't yield themselves to obey God. They won't give heed to the voice of God, the word of God, to obey and live accordingly, to practice it. So these are and again what they will do, they will not follow the first instructions of God, but they will follow their mind and flesh, their intuitions. And according to that they live, but outwardly they may call upon Jesus, speak about salvation and everything, but their life would be according to the same old way. So, so such same old worldly way in the word of God here calls nature, by nature they are children of wrath. If that same old nature, the old ways, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life continues, then the wrath of God, they may no more the children of God, but the wrath of God. So we to escape from this, we need to, uh, Galatians 5, 24, Apostle Paul says, those who are of Christ, they have crucified the flesh and the desires and the passions thereof, uh, lust and everything on the cross. And he also says, Galatians 6, 14, through Jesus Christ, for me, the world is crucified and the, for the world I am crucified. So as long as we are in this world, the, all these things will keep following and try to uh, capture back into its own. But all that we need to do is to make, remind ourselves that we are not for it and we are not of it. And also remind the devil that we are not no more of him and we are no, we are not of him, we are not for him and say that 
you were crucified to me through Jesus Christ on the cross. You were in the spirit of the world, Christ, to uh, hallelujah, capture you to the passions of the world, fashions of the world, desires of the world, lust of the world, and all the uh, glory of the world, or uh, uh, the pomp and glory of this world. All these things we should learn to deny and crucify that through Jesus Christ you are crucified to on the cross to me. And I am to Jesus Christ I'm crucified on the cross to you, world. The same thing, lust, whatever the flesh desires, highest desires, we are supposed to deny them and say, Hallelujah, with the help of the power of the Holy Spirit. We read in Romans 8 13, we have to modify the works of the flesh through the Spirit of God. If you live according to the flesh, you shall die. But if we through the Spirit modify the works of the flesh, we shall live. And also the Spirit lusts after the against the flesh, the flesh lusts against the spirit and spirit against the flesh. So walk according to the spirit so that you do not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Galatians 5, 16, we read that. 16, 17 onwards. And the works of the flesh are written over there. Then the apostle possess, people who possess, continue to possess the works of the flesh, cannot, will not enter into the kingdom of God. What was the cause? Because of the wrath of God. So please, so the next point, uh, we will move on to uh, Romans chapter 2 and verse 5. Book of Romans chapter 2 and verse 5. Hallelujah, praise the Lord, glory to God. There we read, but in accordance with your hardness and your impenitent heart, you are treasuring up for yourself wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to each one according to his deeds, eternal life to those who by patient continuance in doing good, seek for glory, honor, and mortality, but those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish. About the second reason, hallelujah, for the wrath of God is the impenitent heart. The second reason is the impenitent heart and hardness of heart. Hallelujah. So, but in accordance with your hardness and your impenitent heart, the hardness of heart, not willing to yield to God, submit to God, surrender to God, humble before God, broken before God, who can possess contrite spirit, willing, I mean, allowing God to convict and hallelujah, yearning to be delivered from the grip of Satan, the Pharaoh spirit, Pharaoh only hardened his heart, that is the spirit of the world, against God. And he questioned God also, who is God that I should obey him? So, hallelujah, according to their hardness and impenitent heart, impenitent, unwilling to repent, unwilling to change our ways, attitudes, uh, renewal of mind, renewal of spirit, renewal of our ways before God, completely being renewed. Romans 12, to, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed, hallelujah, by the renewal of your mind. Your mind should not be according to the world of Satan or your own self, but it be according to God, to God. That is, when can it be according to God? Only when you meditate and do according to the word of God, which is the mind of God, is revealed in His word. So, in accordance with your hardness and impenitent heart, your treasuring, so this hardness of heart, unchanged the, the heart, and you know, unwilling to change the ways, makes brings the wrath of God. In spite of God being so merciful and kind and long suffering, gave his one living heart and son to suffer for uh, the human race and poured out all his wrath upon him. And hallelujah. But still, people harden their hearts. So, here, previous verse, the word of God says, Hallelujah, glory to God. It's uh, actually the Paul writes, Apostle Paul writes about a man, inexcusable. You are inexcusable, O man, whoever you are, who judge for in whatever you judge another, you condemn yourself. You practice the same things. So, 
Hallelujah. O oh man, you who judge those practicing such things and doing the same, that you will escape the judgment of God. Verse 4, he says, even such people are with hardness of heart, impenitent heart. How, God, how does God deal with them? Do you despise the riches of his goodness? God is still good to such people. Hallelujah, glory to God. And forbearance and long suffering not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance. So without repentance, God cannot work in one's persons because repentance means completely turning towards God, completely opting to choose God, hallelujah, as a savior, as a hallelujah, glory to God, desire, and completely turning away from the perishable world and the ruler of this world, the devil. So in accordance with your hardness and impenitent heart, you are treasuring up for yourself in the wrath in the day of wrath. And revelation, the day of wrath and revelation of righteous judgment of God. So we are treasuring up every day when we keep hardening our hearts and impenitent, not repenting even the smallest thing. We cannot justify it on our own. Hallelujah, only with the help of the word of God and willing to Hallelujah, change our ways, minds and attitude according to God, that is repentance, uh, for which we really have to humble Jesus, humble himself to the point of death of the cross, being obedient to God. So that's when, that's when, that's when being obedient, when you, when you, you know, uh, humble yourself to the point, to the point when, when we are, hallelujah, that, that God has given for us, we have to be obedient to God. Only then, hallelujah, the repentance is possible. So the goodness of God we should not despise. Riches of his goodness, with all long suffering he is waiting. Forbearance, long suffering, he is willing to forgive anybody, anyone, anybody, only if they are willing, come to the understanding, oh, about the grievous sins that they are committing and also not only that how danger uh, prevails when they continue in their sins and where they will end up and all that hallelujah when they are broken before God and come to God they will be accepted by him but uh, in Jesus' time religious people outwardly they were satisfied with the religious traditional activities and they thought they were of God but Jesus called them, you are your of your father, the devil. But they say, our father is God who made the heaven and earth. Abraham. And Abraham's God. But Jesus says, you are of your father, the devil. Because you are not willing to listen to the word that I preach. You don't believe in the words that I preach, which, which I get received from the father and give it to you. So these are the things like you know, hardness of your heart and impenitent heart. You are treasuring up, one day it won't come, it is going on, added on, added on together. Treasuring for, up for yourself, wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of righteousness of God, righteous judgment of God. So that's why in Revelation the Lord says, He who was holy, let him be holy still. He who was righteous, let him be righteous still. He who was unjust, let him be unjust still. He who was filthy, let him be filthy still. If you want to be unjust, continue. If you want to be filthy, continue. But you are treasuring up. It's being added on to bring the wrath of God and righteous judgment of God. So only the word of God says, God who will render, verse 6, Romans 2, 6, He will render to each one according to his days. So all we well, react and work and live here the deeds of our lives in this, on this earth. Hallelujah. He will render according to his deeds eternal life to those who by patient continuance in doing good seek for glory, honor and immortality. But those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, it's important, self-seeking and these are demonic. And then do not obey the truth but obey unrighteousness Indignation and wrath. For them it's kept what is kept, what is kept there, indignation and wrath, tribulation, anguish on every soul of man who does evil of Jew. No one is exceptional. 
of Jew first and also of the Greek. But glory, honor and peace to everyone who works what is good to Jew first and also to the Greek. For there is no partiality with God. Praise the Lord, glory to God. So, third point is, hallelujah, glory to Jesus. Uh, Colossians chapter 3 and verse 6. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 6. There, Apostle Paul writes to people who are obedient to baptism and raise baptism as being buried with Christ for the former life through Adam. And when you come out of waters, we are risen with Christ to live for Christ, live like Christ on this earth. So if we then were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on the things of the earth. We have to set our minds on things above. If you continue to accepting Christ, people do not really know the meaning. They say God is good, He is loving, He will give you bless. But set your mind on things above, where Christ sits at the right hand of your Father. Even in Philippians, the uh, chapter of Apostle Paul, Paul calls certain people that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ because they set their mind on the earthly things. They are the enemies of the cross of Christ, it seems. Oh, hallelujah, because God, Christ did not die, give his life for people to live, enjoy the worldly life, but to enjoy the eternal life. Hallelujah, praise the Lord, glory to God. And here we read, hallelujah. Um, Colossians chapter 3 and verse 6. Apostle Paul writes, Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. What is it? Because of this, after being baptized, and you are supposed to live in the newness of life according to God, because it's an opportunity to live, to leave behind the old life and to completely live a brand new life. Oh, hallelujah, eligible and according to the kingdom of God should be formed in this very early life, earthly life itself. So what should we do? Therefore put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, covetousness, which is idolatry, covetousness. And, uh, so because of these things only, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience. So put to death, as we saw, told you earlier, so with which you yourself walked when you lived in them, but now you yourselves are to put off all these things, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another, since you have put off the old man with his deeds. And I put on the new man who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him. So, hallelujah, when we come to saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, we should be renewed in the knowledge how according to God we have to keep changing or renewing our mind according to the image of him who created him. Put off the old man all together. Whenever you come across it, deny it, rebuke it, otherwise it will grow cut according to 422 of Ephesians. But you should be renewed in the spirit of your mind and put on the new man according to God in true righteousness and holiness, which is absent or not preached or not hallelujah, glory to taken into consideration in today's Christian and holiness is seldom uh, you know practiced or I mean, given importance to it. Uh, for God also said, Be holy, for I am holy. Oh, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Everybody should keep moving to what should be progressive, otherwise, it shows that they are still in the bondage of the enemy, the devil, and still becoming the children of God. Hallelujah. The next thing is Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 26. For if we sin willfully, after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there is no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful expectation of judgment and fury indignation which will devour the adversaries. 
Anyone who has rejected Moses' law dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How, how much more worse punishment do you suppose will be taught worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified, a common thing, and insulted the Spirit of grace? For we know him who said, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. And again, the Lord will judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. So if we sin, if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there is no more sacrifice for sins. We only willfully deliberately, presumptuously. There is no more sacrifice. Jesus laid down his life as a sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. So when you want to live a sin-free life only, when you come to Jesus, you will definitely benefit out of it and you will be able to hallelujah, live a sin-free life with the help of God by being obedient to God, being under the grace of God, by becoming the servant of God, a slave to God, instead of being slave to the world and the uh, devil and to the dictates of the enemy. We have to become slaves of God and not the dictates but instructions and teachings of our Lord. However, the word of God should play an important role in our lives to and we should subject ourselves to the word of God and controlled and ruled and hallelujah and glory to God and directed by the word of God our lives. So if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of truth, that no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. And also in Peter, second Peter, uh, second chapter, there Apostle Paul, uh, Peter writes, says, uh, Praise the Lord, glory to God. Second Peter, second chapter, verse twenty. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome by the sin or the pollutions. The latter end is worse for them than the beginning. For it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness, then having known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered to them. If you again go get entangled in it, then your latter end will be worse than the former. The enemy will always entice people to hallelujah, capture them with all the things that will attract them. But our focus should be fixed on Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of our faith, according to Hebrews 12.1. Hallelujah, running the race, looking unto the author and finisher of faith, not to be distracted, diverted from our goal, which uh, Apostle Paul was so persistent in uh, pursuing towards the kingdom of God, the higher call, and towards the prize, high calling, uh, prize of the high calling. And he was willing to lose everything behind and run the race and accomplish the race. Finally, he says, I run the race, finish the course, keep my feet. Hallelujah, glory to God. That's why Jesus said, if anyone does not deny himself and take up the cross and follow me, he cannot be my disciple. So disciple is not none but the Christian. Hallelujah, the Christians were called, disciples were called as Christians in Antioch first. Uh, Acts of the Apostles, we read that. 11. And then, hallelujah, Romans 1.18. Romans 1.18, there we read a group of people who are kept for the wrath of God. Romans chapter 1 and verse 18. There, Apostle Paul writes over here, uh, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who are these men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. 
The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. Ungodliness and unrighteousness. What is the ungodliness and unrighteousness here according to God? That is who people who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. People do not speak the full truth to the people. Or ministers of God, the fivefold ministries of God, which are given by God for the edification of the body of Christ, the church for which Jesus Christ is the head. The church is not fed properly with the truth of God, but the truth is suppressed and people are being preached according to their desires and their convenience. And Apostle Paul also says in uh, Galatians, Galatians chapter 1 and verse 10, For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I still please men, I would not be a born servant of Christ. A born servant of Christ, completely sold out to Christ, will want to please God, not men. I make known to you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached by me is not according to man, for I neither received it from man, nor was I taught it. But it came through the revelation of Jesus Christ. Previously he saying, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel, which is not another, but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert, pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel to you, that what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you, then what you have received, let him be accursed. Do I now persuade men or God? Do I seek to please men? For if I still please men, I would not be a born servant of God. If I take that, there are lots of things that we can speak. Romans 16, 17. Now I urge you, brethren, note those who cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you learned and avoid them. For those who are such do not serve our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. And by smooth words and flattering speech, deceive the hearts of the simple. For your obedience has become known to all. Praise the Lord, glory to God. So be wise and good and simple concerning evil. So God of peace shall touch eight hundred feet. So take note of people who speak with smooth words and flattery speech. They deceive the hearts of the simple means people void of the truth of God. People who are not rooted in the truth of God. Second Thessalonians 2, uh, from 10 onwards, when they lose the love for the truth of God, God himself will give them over to believe uh, the lie. And give God himself will send some strong delusion to believe the lie. Because for them to be condemned, hallelujah, glory to God, for them to be condemned, hallelujah. And hallelujah, if you continue to be rooted in the truth of God, you will be unshaken, you will be strong. According to Matthew 7, he built his house upon the rock. It's like the one who, the one who keeps the word of God is like him. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. And also the same thing was right. Romans, Ephesians 5, 6 also speaks about people who preach empty words to people. They themselves are empty, so they preach empty promises, empty words to people. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore do not be partakers with them. Praise the Lord, glory to God. What are these empty words if you read? Hallelujah. Uh, but fornication and all uncleanness of covetousness, let it not be even named among you as is fitting for sins. <clears throat> Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather give of thanks, giving of thanks. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater 
has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore do not partake as with the empty people, deceive other people with empty words, false hope, false promises, not according to uh, the word of God, cautioning them, instructing them, warning them, and hallelujah, every promise of God is conditional, not telling the people to live according to the conditions of God, to inherit the promises of God, but empty promises of God, which will not be valid and which will not receive any blessings from God. So John 3.36 Jesus John 3.36 Jesus says, The Father loves the Son and has given all things into his hand. He who believes in the Son has everlasting life. He who believes in the Son has everlasting life. And he who does not believe the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides in him. He who does not believe in the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides in him. So people, there are one group of people who will not acknowledge Jesus as the Son of God. They will say he is a prophet and uh, we believe in him as a prophet. He is going to come back and to break the cross which is a stumbling block and all that and they would say that Jesus did not die, he did not share his bread. The purpose of Jesus coming to the world, to the earth was to die and to share his bread for the remission of sins. All this truth completely they deny and also deny Jesus as the Son of God. And such people, hallelujah, wrath of God abides in them. And finally, praise the Lord, glory to God. Revelation chapter 14 and verse 11. In the time of Antichrist, people who will be slain uh, for the cause of Christ who do not uh, worship the beast uh, erected by uh, and its image erected by the, uh, by the dragon, the devil, and to take its seat. And people who stand for the truth and for God in the last minute, and they will be slain as martyrs. But people who take the seal of the beast and worship the beast, they will face the wrath of God. That we read in Revelation chapter 14, verse 9, verse 10. And he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Who are these people? These are the people who have taken the who have taken the mark of the beast and worshipped the beast. And such people on them the wrath of God will be poured. If it full first Thessalonians, we finish with that to conclude. First Thessalonians 1 10. And to wait for the Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus who delivers us from the wrath to come. Jesus only is going to deliver us from the wrath to come. So what should we do? We need to wait for him to come from heaven. Waiting for Jesus should be taught. We have, how do we wait? I mean, um, watch therefore and pray always by waiting, preparing ourselves. Waiting is pray always with watchfulness, diligence, Hallelujah, glory to God, preparing ourselves, hallelujah, for the other kingdom, the kingdom of God. So, for they themselves declare concerning us what manner of entry we had to you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the true living, serve the living God, living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, who will deliver us from the wrath to come. Jesus was what when? When we keep waiting upon him, we will be delivered from the wrath to come. May the Lord bless this verse and hallelujah. May we all be benefited out of this word and get ready for his kingdom and his coming. In Jesus' name, Amen.